Hello and welcome to Tech Field Day Coho Tech Talks. My name is Tom Hollingsworth. I am a former networking engineer. I am also a member of the Tech Field Day group and we are here with uh, some distinguished bloggers and influencers as well as uh, some people from Coho Data and we're going to be talking a lot about hot topics and storage and in networking and how it relates to the world that we see today. Uh, I'd like to introduce our panelists and guests for today. First of all is Mr. Stephen Foskett. Stephen, how are you? Hello. I'm well, thank you. I'm uh, just getting back from uh, GigaOM Structure uh, this week where I was uh, with uh, Andy out there. So um, it's uh, been, an interesting, been an interesting week, a lot of announcements, a lot of interesting stuff, and, um, you know, uh, looking forward to this tech. Outstanding. Uh, joining us for the first time today is Mr. Lindsay Hill. Lindsay, why don't you tell everyone a little bit about yourself? Hi there. My name is Lindsay Hill. I'm a network management consultant based in New Zealand. Uh, I've uh, been having a pretty good week. I've just been um, sitting at home late on Friday night writing Python code. <laughs> well, that's always fun. Boy, you guys know how to party. <laughs> uh, Bob. While well, you're joining us again for our your second tech talk, why don't you introduce yourself to everybody and let you know let them know where who you are? Indeed, thanks for having me back, Tom. Uh, I'm Bob McCouch. I'm a networking consultant uh, based in the uh, Pennsylvania region in the United States. Um, I blog at herdingpackets.net, um, and I'm also on the Twitters as at Bob McCouch. Outstanding. And joining us as always is Mr. Andy Warfield. Andy, how are you today? I'm good. How are you, Tom? Oh, I'm not bad. I think you're probably a little bit cooler than I am up there in the Great White North. Yeah, it's, it's not. It's sunny, but it's, uh, it's, it's not short weather. <laughs> yeah, the, in Oklahoma, it's getting to be about 95 Fahrenheit, which is shorts weather and anything else you can manage to take off. <laughs> So we wanted to talk a little bit today about uh, networking, specifically about software-defined networking, because we've had a lot of networking conferences as of late. We've had Cisco Live, HP Discover, uh, Stephen and Andy just got back from GigaOM Structure. There's a lot of discussion about software-defined networking and all the things that it encompasses. And one of the things that I like to bring up when we talk about software-defined networking is how important it is to use it as a means to an end to get something accomplished. And believe it or not, one of the most popular examples that I give is Coho Data, because Coho has taken SDN and they've wrapped it around something, and they're actually shipping a product that does something kind of amazing. Andy, why don't you tell us a little bit about SDN and Coho and why it's important? Uh, sure. So <clears throat> I guess um, as SDN is, uh, is, is a really, really interesting technology, um, but to Coho maybe in a slightly different way than, than it's normally uh, billed as being. So, you know, if we look at the way that the data center has kind of evolved over the last 10 years, there's been an enormous amount of, of movement on the server side, right? Servers have become, you know, cheaper and broader. They've gotten virtualization facilities and devices have moved onto the PCIe bus and all sorts of stuff has happened there. Um, and a lot of that, I think you could argue, has been has been facilitated by the you know, relatively open software stacks that, that sit on top of them. Um, one of the things that's kind of happened on the networking side over the same period of time is relatively little change, right? Like up until fairly recently, um, the network was a less mutable thing. Um, the, the stacks that you bought and deployed were, were much less accessible and much less extensible. Um, and so the weird bit of that is at the hardware level, these switches are incredible. Um, and have been relatively uh, commodity-based for a while. And so the, the chipsets that are on there that do the fast path um, for packet forwarding across a, a 1 or a 10 gig switch, um, primarily made by Broadcom. Uh, there's a second set made by, uh, by Fulcrum uh, that, that Intel now owns. And SDN uh, really represents, at the end of the day, a set of APIs that let you program those switches. Um, and so where, where SDN is being built is solving problems in large organizations. It's, it's solving a bunch of stuff around you know, provisioning and managing networks um, in the large. But the really cool thing about SDN for Coho is that it means suddenly there's a bunch of APIs that lets you really directly program the network. Um, and so if I bring that back to our product, right, the, the, the problem that we set out to solve that led us to look at SDN in the first place was that uh, we wanted to scale out uh, a, a network server, right? We were trying to build a scalable, initially, NFS target. 
Um, that NFS server is is exactly like a web server in a lot of senses. It sits at the end of an IP address. It has TCP sessions coming into it. Um, but we want to make it scale across a whole bunch of servers. And you can't effectively subdivide that IP address. And so one of the things that we realized was that by incorporating an SDN switch in the product, and, and we, we package and uh, run code on top of a uh, Arista 10 gig switch, it's a top of rack switch, um, we're able to, to push some of the management of the TCP stack out onto the switch. And we can present the illusion uh, that there is a single server sitting at the end of the network when really all those TCP flows are being mapped across a whole bunch of different servers and moved around dynamically. Um, so that's not the only way that we take advantage of SDN, but it's one really, really interesting way that you can effectively use the network to tie a load balancer right into your application. So Andy, I actually had a question. Um, if, if you're able to tell us anything about it, sort of what was the chicken and what was the egg there? Did you guys set out and say, we're going to use SDN to build a storage solution, or were you, you know, you had you had the idea for your storage product and said, you know, okay, now we've got a problem we can't solve. But here, look, here's this new technology called OpenFlow, and and we can use that. I mean, was it was SDN just the right wrench to to turn the bolt, or uh, was it sort of an integral strategic part of you guys saying, well, we're going to make a startup and it's going to be, you know, SDN enabled storage? Um, so the. The use of the, the SDN stuff, so I, I think the answer is probably both, but in, in, in weirdly different contexts. Um, the startup's decision to use SDN really, really came from the performance that we got off the flash that we were using. Um, the, you know, the fact that we were really, really quickly able to overwhelm a single 10 gig port meant that we realized we really had to push the storage out across the network. It was sort of like from a from a performance of the flash perspective, w w there was no choice but to build a scale out system. Um, and so from that perspective, we kind of came to SDN as the only way to really scale it out um, without getting into the more traditional problems that you have in systems like this, where there's like a central gateway that that all the requests have to come through. Um, that said, uh, when we were talking about some of the uh, the really early ideas on the startup and. And we continue to, to, to do a bunch of, of work on some of these ideas for our, um, our backplane, effectively, the, the, the traffic between the individual um, uh, devices in the storage system. Um, one of the early ideas that we had with SDN was that because you can go in and program um, the forwarding tables on the switch, the L2 and L3 tables and the TCAM, um, one of the things that, that we had sort of floated as an idea really early on was what if instead of addressing an end host in the switch, uh, you instead use those forwarding tables to address pieces of data? Right. So, so what if you had a, a storage protocol on the switch, where when you when you went to access a piece of data, um, you put the address right of the memory that you wanted to access in the destination address on the switch, and you let the switch be programmed to find where it was. And so use the switch to move it around. And uh, so that was a that was a pretty early idea for us, but it's. That one's, you know, it's 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 kind of ongoing work that we're we're folding it into the back plan, but it's it's ended up being a much more significant uh, engineering challenge than than just taking advantage of the switch as a as a load balancer. And as far as storage goes, uh, this one of the biggest challenges with storage is figuring out how to make it scale. So it's one of those things, Bob, where um, you know this is a really novel approach and uh, you know an interesting way to to make that happen because, frankly. Um, this is the the biggest challenge uh, that that companies are facing right now, trying to figure out how to make a uh, scalable storage system. And so that's one of the things that really caught my eye initially with Coho was the fact that they were doing it in a, a really interesting way and 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 you know trying to apply this technology to something that uh, it, rather than the traditional um, you know hyperscale data center uh, you know environment. Lindsay, what are your thoughts on this? What, what I find quite interesting about it all is that it's really, a, it's using SDN to solve problems, but from a customer perspective, it doesn't matter. Or, oh, sorry, I mean, not that, that that doesn't come, quite come across right, but well, the it SDN doesn't matter. Doesn't that, matter. It does, from a customer perspective, the use of SDN or whatever, it's just a piece underneath it all. It's just, it's using SDN to solve a real problem without getting caught up on all the hype about SDN. It's just solving problems. 
Yeah, Makes yeah. Sense. Uh, and in fact, one of the I think one of the more business sided experiences that we've had with the uh, with the company is that we actually talk less and less um, about the fact that we're using SDN to uh, to customers. But it it absolutely is solving a problem for us. Um, but one of the experiences we had was we were so excited about it as kind of technologists up front that we'd often lead the conversation by talking about you know how we're getting all this great stuff out of the switch, and and suddenly we talked our way into a conversation with a networking admin at the at the site that's like you know very concerned about you know, whether or not this new use of, of networking should be you know thought about carefully or things like that, and it 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 led to a lot of really interesting conversations. Um, but often it ended up being pretty distracting from the problem that we're solving at the end of the day. Yeah. Actually, yeah. that's a really good point, actually. That. Uh, that, that's a really good point, actually, because if you're selling to, say, the storage teams or the server teams, uh, they're not so not quite so interested in what's going on with the networking stuff. And so then, yeah, you're so there selling, saying, hey, I better pull my networking guy in. But it doesn't actually, they don't, they don't actually really need to, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, I so I mean, I, I actually have two two kind of funny things on this. The first one is, you know, in terms of how we describe it, there's there's actually a gamut um, of on one hand, you know, just saying don't even worry about the fact that there's a switch there, right? Imagine that this is just a storage target that has one port per physical client, um, that you know, it's just got a really really wide pipe going into it, uh, and then you can kind of dig in progressively into whatever amount of detail you want on the SDN side. Um, but on your point about the uh, the, the, the tension in some environments between the storage and networking admins. Um, I, I had a customer conversation a few weeks ago with a really large environment, um, really interesting, um, uh, large uh, Microsoft Exchange environment, uh, greater than 20 petabytes. Um, and these guys said that uh, that they, they ran Fiber Channel. And the, the reason that they ran Fiber Channel, despite um, looking at iSCSI and also being quite interested in NFS, was every experience they'd ever had with IP storage involved the networking team pushing in firewall rules down onto their switches that made storage completely unavailable, often at like 2 in the afternoon. Right? <laughs> and then they would have to go file a change request to get the rules removed while storage remained unavailable. And so you know, their claim basically was that Fiber Channel was not a network. And so... <laughs> They can manage their own stuff. So yeah, you have to kind of be sensitive to this uh, this sort of tension in, in a lot of environments, and it's certainly something that we've we've found in using SDN in the product. So uh, that, that's the... certainly something I've seen about um, yeah the use of fiber channel purely so you can say that's isolated, that's over there. The storage guys look at that. It's completely sit. It's a separate group of people, separate things. Yeah. Not not for performance or speed or anything, just because just, it just works better politically. Yeah, <laughs> it's security through obscurity, really, and that's been one of those things. Um, you know, I always felt like Fiber Channel SAN was actually a big security hole because, frankly, the storage guys didn't care to implement any of the security features of it, and so essentially um, anyone who could get on the Fiber Channel SAN could, could do they want. basically do anything they want, and yeah. and you know, I don't want to go down too much of a rat hole here, but the you know the counter argument is, oh well, who could get on the SAN? And the answer is anyone with a server. You know, anyone who's got any of the servers, they're on the SAN. You know, I mean, and nowadays, honestly, you know, it's it's actually much easier to get on a fiber channel SAN. I mean, you can get fiber channel from your MacBook. Um, so there's that. So anybody so who think thinks that, you know that's secure or cordoned off because it's fiber channel is fooling themselves. So what I think is interesting there is that um, you know what Coho's done is they've basically taken uh, SDN technology, like essentially OpenFlow in this case, or OpenFlow with some magic, and um, you know, used it to in in this little this little pocket to build their solution. And I guess the 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 um, the question that leads me to then is is that how we're going to see SDN deployed in um, in a lot of enterprises for a while? Is in these little you know pockets, these little pieces that enable specific solutions. And I've blogged about that. I mean, I actually think that is the direction it's going to go. But I'm curious if that uh, you know, if the other panelists here kind of agree that that is how we're going to see it, as opposed to a grand vision of we're going to build a software-defined network. Yeah. And then find so is it, is it a point it. solution, or is it a new strategy? Right. And I think that depends a lot on the market, right? I mean, I think for if you're, you know, Google or Facebook or, you know, some hyperscale, web-scale kind of environment, I think it, as a strategy for building your network, I think it absolutely is viable. But uh, my opinion is that for um, more moderate-sized uh, uh, enterprises, 
I think it's going to be, we're going to see point solutions that leverage SDN to provide a package product that has capabilities that they, you know, these companies couldn't produce a couple of years ago, or at least not, you know, with the same, the same capabilities. But I'm curious what everyone else thinks. Everyone else being Andy, I think. <laughs> well, so I, I, I think I mean there's a there's an interesting um, paper by uh, I think it's Jen Rexford and one of her students where they 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 make the claim that that you can get a lot of the value out of SDN uh, with actually very little SDN deployment. Um, so that that putting you know a small number of SDN switches in at a, at a few relevant uh, choke points, often in, in a larger network, um, you know lets you get a lot of the value even though you can't you know, manipulate all the uh, intermediate switches and stuff. So that's, you know, that, that speaks well to the fact that it's not a complete rip and replace uh, network upgrade. Um, one of the things that, that, that we've really seen over, you know, the, uh, the past year of doing deployments is first we were, you know, shipping the, the Arista switch with the, uh, with the stores that we built. And, you know, we were initially kind of saying, you know, we're still, you know, gaining experience with this thing so this is a storage switch like leave it leave it as it is and you know we're qualifying other switches at the same time but there you go and over the past year this has kind of opened up into you know there are a couple of customer environments where the customer said actually the thing that I like about what you guys are offering is I can consolidate my storage and network spend for this project um, and so we've, we've had a, a couple of examples where We've we've basically given them the ability to choose which ports on the switch they're using for uh, for traffic for coho, and which ports they want to just leave wide open as general purpose network traffic. Um, and uh, now we're starting to see some environments where people are coming to us saying, actually, I've deployed a whole bunch of Arista. Um, you know, can you guys uh, ship the Arista and what you do is software on top of that, and you know, just integrate with our network? And of course, that's like a super attractive case for us. And so it's interesting with these other switch announcements that we've seen, because Arista was really the first to build a solid, you know, full bisection 10 gig switch with an x86 on it. But now we've got the uh, uh, the Intel Alta reference that Quanta is now building. You know, you've got the Facebook announcement yesterday for their switch. There are a bunch of, of these things, and then a bunch of accompanying software stacks, right, like the Cumulus Network stack and so on. And so. Um, as we start to see more and more of these in production, I think absolutely you'll you'll probably start to see them being installed, motivated by applications like us. Hopefully, there are a bunch of other applications like us that will that will drive people to to roll them out. Because uh, it's certainly you know the more environments with switches that I can run our uh, our switch side on, you know, the better it is for me. So, no, are you low, looking at? Oh, no, go ahead. Let's let's I was going to say, it lowers the cost of your solution if you can use the customer's already existing network Absolutely. infrastructure. Yes. Yeah. Um, just some, something on that I was thinking about. So you've been using the Arista gear underneath it at the moment. Um, will you be working with other vendors as well? Like, is that, you know, like how much are you doing that's specific to, let's say, generic OpenFlow stuff versus using some of the Arista hooks? Um, and how much will be will we will we be able to do with yeah a cumulus box let's say? Hmm. Um, so most of what we do in terms of uh, of actual traffic steering and traffic control um, is using OpenFlow. Uh, so that involves things like uh, like load balancing and dynamically migrating TCP sessions, but also stuff like uh, like fencing uh, fencing nodes. Um, you know, from a distributed systems perspective, they become unresponsive. Um, and also implementing our, our back channel on a private network. Um, we do use some of Arista's APIs for, uh, for monitoring, um, uh, like link utilization and stuff. Uh, but Cumulus has similar APIs for all these things, as do the other vendors. Um, and so from our perspective, we're working with both a couple of other um, you know, enterprise packaged switch offerings. Uh, we're also doing a whole bunch of internal evaluation and qualification on some of these, like, Newer, more ODM type switches, um, where we can, you know, at least from a from an R and D perspective, uh, work at a much lower level on the switch, right? Really programming against the chipset uh, SDKs. There's some cool stuff that you can do down there. Very cool. So, Andy, let me ask you a question because when you first explained the way Coho does their solution to me, it, it rang some bells along some proprietary protocols, like um, specifically Cisco's Gateway Load Balancing Protocol. Um, how 
would you implement Coho, could you implement a Coho solution without SDN? And what would make it more difficult without using OpenFlow and, and some of the things that you've accomplished? Um, oh, okay. Um, so from from the... So uh, please redesign your product on the fly right now. <laughs> <laughs> so from a, from a, let's just focus on the, uh, on the load balancing end of things, right? So, um, you know, I'm not aware of, uh, of, of any um, NFS or even necessarily really stored specific uh, uh, load balancing products, but the web analogs in terms of like an F5 or something like that are fairly, uh, uh, fairly well understood. Um, and in that case, right, the nice thing with, uh, with HTTP is the sessions are usually quite short. Uh, you have gazillions of them, um, and, you know, they, they don't really have a lot of, uh, of strong state dependency on the, on the web servers that they talk to. You kind of want to keep them at the same one so they have access to their cookies, but it's not the end of the world that they don't. Um, and so in that case, what you need to build is uh, a server that has, you know, pretty big pipes coming into it and a lot of pipes going out to all of your web servers, right? That's the kind of traditional load balancer thing. Um, with us, uh, the guts of that implementation are the data path on the switch. And so the nice thing about the SDN switch is you can take the fast path of that load balancing implementation and just use the switch to do it. And then the logic can move back into the servers. Um, and so I, I guess you could, you could kind of imagine building something analogous to one of those enterprise load balancers to, to scale out storage traffic like this. But you know, one of the really nice insights from taking advantage of SDN is you don't have to. Right? You don't have to spend that money building that huge fronting server that can do you know, TCP termination or, uh, or steering, um, which is it's a lot of complexity. It's um, one of the other really kind of interesting things with SDN is in an enterprise network where you have multiple hops, as we increase our reach into those networks with SDN, you can you can steer um, really wide paths of, uh, of traffic across those networks. Right? So, so, so one challenge that you get with placing um, storage on one end of a network, right, and see this in data centers a lot of the time, right, on one end of the room there, there are a few large arrays. Um, and then they've more recently bought a bunch of uh, blade enclosures or servers, and they put them in racks at the other end of the room, and there are two or three switches sitting in the middle there. And so that network runs spanning tree, and, and you know, there's a narrow you know, hourglass shape to it where all the traffic ends up coming over a single you know, 10 gig trunk effectively across the thing. Um, and it ends up being a reasonable amount of, of traffic engineering to widen that. Um, and that's the kind of thing that Coho's integration with SDN, you know, promises to do, a, I think, a pretty interesting job of, which is that we can wire up independent physical links across those networks and actually draw, you know, tens or hundreds of gig of traffic between the servers at one end of the room and the storage at the other. It's, uh, it's certainly a place where where this convergence between networking and storage is, is interesting, right? Where we're thinking about networking in terms of the ability to access a lot of data in a hurry um, yeah. is, is really useful. So, Andy, I've got two other questions for you. One of those is, um, so with, with SDN or OpenFlow in particular solving the problem that it did or, or enabling the capability for Coho that, that it did, um, what's your next, you know, wh where do you head from here in terms of product development? Do you, are you looking at um, you know, what else, because SDN means a lot, right? I mean, it, it can have a very broad meaning, right? Um, we're talking about here mostly in the, uh, within the scope of OpenFlow, but so are you looking at, at what else OpenFlow can do for you and other, uh, and other technologies that might fall under the, mm -hmm. the premise of SDN and saying, what can, how else can you, you know, the, so we did something here that's innovative and new and, 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 you know, exciting and interesting. How else can we leverage this to give us, you know, an advantage? So that's one of the questions is kind of where do you head from here with regard to, SDN and using it in your products. And the other one, uh, something I just wanted to ask was also, uh, how's your reception been to saying um, in, in, you know, say a, a strong Cisco shop or Juniper shop or whatever, somebody who's got uh, an existing affinity to a particular brand of switch in their data center, how's your reception been when you come in and you say, well, here's our complete package, by the way, it includes, you know, this, this other brand of switch. Has that been, has that been a sticking point for you or has that been um, kind of received as, well, here's a turnkey solution that, Right. right. So I'll answer the second question first because it's a okay. shorter answer. Um, the uh, the answer to that one is, you know, 
I go into I go into um, we go into shops that, that have big investments in you know EMC or NetApp storage, and the storage admin is absolutely like uninterested in taking on anything else. Um, and the exact same thing is true on the networking side. Um, and so you know I've absolutely had those conversations where the networking people are you know no you're not going to put in something. And by and large, the networking people seem to be. Um, well, I don't want to make that generalization. I will. Uh, you know, like the ones that we've had, based on you know, right. you got three on here. <laughs> There's the, the one thing I think that's happened is uh, with the networking guys. Um, certainly, in in some of the you know, especially especially like Cisco shops, uh, they've worked with Cisco for so long you know, that we have a couple of times had the situation where the Arista stuff has a certain sexiness to it, and it's an opportunity for them to bring in a, an interesting new piece of hardware. Um, without having to try and convince their boss that they need to buy a bunch of like different networking gear, so that's gone both ways. But we've certainly seen that that resistance. Um, so the other question is super interesting, right? Which direction do we go in on stuff? And, and one way that that I kind of encourage you to think about what we've done uh, with Coho in terms of integrating storage in the network is to think about it actually like much less from the perspective of storage. Um, so NFS, like I said at the beginning, is really just a server, right? It's just a way of serving up data. Um, a web server is a server, right? A mail server is a server. There are lots of different ways of serving up data. And the thing that Co has kind of done is we've put a really, really ruthless focus at the, the flash and disk and, and compute endpoint on that system at getting really, really good efficiency, right? Just making sure that you're, you're driving traffic to to saturate the flash and saturate the CPU and really try and achieve a balance of resources in that box. And then the integration with the network lets us scale that balanced resource horizontally, right, and still appear to be a single service. And so you know, one of the directions that, that we will certainly explore is now that we've kind of done that end to end for this really relevant storage protocol of NFS, what are the other interesting sort of application use cases that that you might do that for? And it's it's not necessarily just other storage protocols like iSCSI, right? There there might be quite significant you know broader opportunities to uh, to stack other stuff up on top of it. Um, I guess interesting. Yeah, thanks. It's it's stuff that we're doing a bunch of work on. It's it's been quite fun to to sort of see how that goes because a lot of the the moving parts under the covers, right? The way that NFS talks to the switch to load balance. Are totally repeatable, right? They're they're API techniques. Um, yeah. The uh, I guess the one other sort of way that we'll go forward that's relevant to SDN is is this maybe goes back a little bit to the fiber channel discussion, right? In, in the fiber channel case, you're deploying a completely new network, right? Now, fiber channel I don't know stands as a strong example of of innovation and agility in terms of like a protocol that moves in a hurry. Um, but at the end of the day, it is a new kind of you know, thing in the in in the environment, and if you think about what you get with with virtualization and isolation in an SDN environment, um, suddenly you're able to deploy totally new protocols, right? You can isolate a channel, and we do this on the switch. We, you know, the the back channel across the individual coho nodes is effectively an L2 VLAN, right? It's a it's it's an independent network, and we can do whatever we want there. Um, so the level of protocol innovation that we can kind of engage in there. And the way that we can use the switch to support new protocols that we develop is really, really interesting. It's something that you haven't, you know, been able to do in enterprise networks for for a while, and I think it's a really fun thing. Um, and so that's an area where, you know, it's it's kind of a uh, it, it's 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 a project that's like ongoing, and, and it's you know, admittedly a longer effort for the company, but it's one that I'm I'm pretty excited about in terms of uh, where it'll take us. Very good. Well, Andy, thank you for your time today. We really appreciate it. I think we're about to the point where we want to wrap up, so I'm going to let the panelists um, talk a little bit about what they'll be doing this week. Stephen, what have you got on your plate? Um, hopefully some sleep. Uh, it's been a been a busy day, and uh, uh, as I said, um, I uh, we're currently planning for our next uh, you know second half of all the Tech Field Day events. We're going to be Tech Field Day at the at VMworld. Um, we also have Wireless Field Day, Networking Field Day, and Storage Field Day coming up. And if people are interested in that, they can just check out techfieldday.com. And uh, I, uh, I also forgot to mention, I did make a blog post about structure uh, at my blog, uh, which is blog.foskets.net, if anybody's interested in seeing that. Outstanding. Lindsay, what have you got on your plate, and how can people find you on the interwebs? 
More Python. <laughs> there is more Python. This weekend, there's more Python. I'm going to try and... <laughs> I was working on it last night. Doesn't mean I finished it last night, so more of that. <laughs> on the road earlier in the week, visiting one of my favorite clients, and uh, yeah, more more ISP and network management stuff for me coming up this week, which is all pretty good, and I'll be writing at lkhill.com and on the Twitters at, at NorthlandBoy. All right. Well, thank you for joining us today, Lindsay. Bob, what have you got coming up? Oh, feels like just another another week in the pipe. Um, got some uh, some customer projects I'm working on. Got a lot of blog material I got to try to uh, catch up on. Um, so, you know, well, I don't know, a good dozen uh, draft articles that I got to finish up at some point. So um, probably another week with not enough sleep for me. So uh, and I am uh, will be posting those blog articles at herdingpackets.net. And, of course, you can always find me on Twitter, at Bob McCouch. Outstanding. Well, here's hoping you can get at least a couple of hours per night. <laughs> and, Andy, um, I know you're a pretty busy guy, and you've got a lot of stuff coming up. So uh, what have you got on your plate? Oh, not too much. I'm heading into the office uh, this afternoon. The, uh, I'm, I'm at the, uh, the university right now, but I'm heading into the, uh, the office to do some planning for our next release. And, uh, and then it's Friday beers with the, uh, with the team. So, uh, so things are winding down. I'll take one. <laughs> Come on over. Yeah. Outstanding. Well, gentlemen, thank you for joining us today. We always appreciate your time and your insight into all things storage and networking. Um, my name is Tom Hollingsworth. You can find me online at my blog, which is networkingnerd.net. You can also find me on Twitter as at networkingnerd. As Stephen said, we've got a lot of exciting Tech Field Day things coming up for the second half of this year, including Tech Field Day at VMworld, wireless networking and storage field days, as well as a few other surprises. So stay tuned to our website, techfieldday.com, where you can find out more information about what we've got going on. And we will see you next time.